Hey guys, welcome back to Self Care Haven. I'm excited to be making new videos for you, and today I'm making a brief video on how the narcissist makes you feel and act like the narcissist. And they do so through two techniques known as projection and gaslighting. Now I'm sure you've heard of gaslighting. It's a very common tactic in abusive relationships uh, where the abuser basically denies or minimizes something he or she did or said to you to provoke you or hurt you, uh, such as infidelity, um, you know, verbal insults. Uh, they'll make you question yourself and second guess yourself and doubt your own perception of reality so that they never have to take accountability for their actions. And it often works together with projection because as soon as they're denying something, they're also projecting their qualities, their traits, their actions onto you. Um, so if you've ever been with a narcissist who is overly suspicious of you, um, it's often because they themselves are cheating on you. And I want to provide a, you know, a brief concrete example um, that I've experienced when I've uh, encountered, dated, or been in relationships with narcissistic abusers. Um, basically, the narcissist is very possessive of you early on in the relationship, right? So they put you on, under constant surveillance. They're constantly love bombing you in the initial stages of attraction. And Usually this also means they question you about who you're with, um, what you're doing, and they might make it seem as if they're just com just interested in your life, they're just concerned about you, uh, but really it's just to make sure that you're still, you're still being faithful to them, even if you haven't uh, discussed being in a relationship with them that uh, yet. It could still happen in the early stages of dating where they're love bombing you, they're constantly checking up on you, and they're basically putting you under, under their surveillance to make sure that nobody else um, can have you or talk to you or interact with you. And this type of surveillance uh, for someone who's codependent especially might seem um, almost flattering and um, of course a bit creepy as well, but uh, depending on how you react to it, the narcissist will um, usually continue to love bomb you and make you think that you're very important to them and continue to really keep tabs on you, right? Now, when suspicious things start happening on their end, as in, let's say you wake up one morning um, and you see that your narcissist is getting calls at odd hours or you notice, and these are just um, examples that I've drawn from survivor accounts that I've also read over the web, you uh, notice that your narcissist is still active on um, their dating account, or you notice that your narcissist uh, flirts with others in public, right? And it makes you feel uncomfortable. Um, or you just feel a general sense of unease um, whenever they're texting someone and it's taking a long time. And you notice that um, there's periods where they disappear and they don't even, they, they don't, especially in the devaluation phase, they don't check up on you as they used to anymore, right? So it starts to give you the chills. You're like, wait, what's going on? You used to be on top of me at all times. I mean, that was overwhelming, but now that's kind of going away and you're disappearing and this is weird. Um, what's usually happening during that time is obviously they're, they're hooking new supply in, right? And they will often tell you um, that you're acting crazy and you're being jealous and possessive. Never mind the fact that in the first initial stages of dating and the relationship, you were constantly under their surveillance, right? They were always asking you who you were with, uh, what you were doing. Um, they were always becoming insulted if you ever showed any type of interaction with uh, another man. Um, they were always the ones who were acting jealous and possessive, and you weren't even possessive of them because you guys hadn't even discussed the relationship, right? That's how it often happens with a narcissist. Um, they will make you feel like the crazy one. Uh, they will make you feel like, whoa, I must be the jealous, possessive one because I'm calling them out on these things that, yeah, they seem pretty shady, and when you add them together, they don't really make sense, and, hmm, wait a minute, these are all signs of cheating, but if I call it out, I'm the jealous and possessive one? Yeah, that's how they get to you. It's very, very easy um, for them to feel, to act like you are the crazy one. So you start doubting yourself, you start gaslighting yourself, 
And even though there's all these signs um, of lies and things not adding up and this shady kind of behavior that starts popping up more and more often and these disappearances um, and these flirtations, um, which are just used to provoke you, um, it's a technique known as triangulation where they manufacture love triangles and they love doing that. Um, you start to feel like, I don't understand. Am I the crazy one? Am I the jealous possessive one? Or are they just gaslighting me? Um, are they just projecting their own qualities, traits uh, onto me? Um, when you're dealing with someone who's narcissistic, it's usually that they are projecting their own qualities and traits onto you. Uh, whatever they're doing, whether it's infidelity, whether it's, it's a character trait that they, they despise in themselves, for example, um, they might hate the fact that um, they're not successful or they haven't achieved as much. And they might try to project that onto you, um, even though you've achieved a lot. And it's all just crazy making. It's all just a way to keep you on your toes. And um, it's a mind game where they make you feel like you're the crazy one all the time so that you're never allowed to hold them accountable for any of their actions. Um, so if you've faced uh, triangulation, gaslighting, and projection before, um, don't blame yourself. Um, really get in touch with your own reality. I find that writing things down really helps. Keeping a record of things that the narcissist has said or done, um, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's in a relationship, whether it's a family member, keeping a record because you need to keep yourself grounded in your reality. Uh, the narcissist very easily can fool you into thinking that you are the crazy one and that you are the narcissist. Um, and you do feel like you're acting very jealous and possessive because you're like, oh my God, I shouldn't be calling them out on this shady behavior. I should just, you know, leave it alone. I should just let them do whatever they want. Um, but at the same time, if you're in a relationship with a narcissist and um, they aren't being faithful, it's it's very difficult not to get involved and not to call them out on behavior that just seems really, really shady, right? Um, so really be on the lookout for that. If you're currently dating someone or in a relationship with a narcissist um, or you left a narcissist and you're, you're really reflecting on that relationship and all the times that you felt really crazy, just remember that the narcissist is a master of making you feel like you're the jealous possessive one and they literally manufacture situations where you do feel jealous um, so it's not even about your own issues really it's about what is the narcissist manufacturing um, usually they will flirt in front of you they will bring um, they bring up their exes a lot I find that's like a very common tactic they will always bring in their their ex-girlfriend their ex-boyfriend into the conversation whether it's in a devaluing tone or an idealizing tone and they will switch it up. So sometimes it'll be idealizing, sometimes it'll be devaluing. And it really just makes you feel like, oh my goodness, maybe, maybe, maybe I am jealous because um, I get uncomfortable when they talk about their exes. I get uncomfortable when they talk about all these other girls. I get uncomfortable when they talk about um, who they find attractive. Um, so really, really be aware of that. And and remember that there are techniques you can use to resist gaslighting and projection. Um, in terms of really being grounded in your own reality, I find that writing helps. Uh, keeping records of things that have happened, things that were said and done, uh, is really helpful to refer back to uh, when you want to remind yourself that, yes, this actually did happen, it made me feel this way, and it's my reality, and it truly did happen. It really was said. Um, because narcissists are masters of making you second guess and doubt the fact that you experienced something, that you felt something um, in reaction to their covert manipulation tactics. And again, this advice really applies to relationships with pathological people. So in the realm of normal relationships, healthy relationships, obviously jealousy um, needs to be dealt with in a healthier manner. Uh, when it comes to the narcissist, however, they like to manufacture jealousy, so they will set up situations and manufacture situations where they get to see you jealous and they make you feel unstable and they make you feel possessive. And you even start to act possessive because you realize it's part of a larger pattern and it would make any person, any normal person, feel like they're on edge. So don't blame yourself if you have acted in the way that the narcissist has uh, told you you're acting jealous and possessive because 
They manufactured that situation for a purpose so they could see you act that way. Um, I know it sounds um, really, really cruel, but these people are out there and they really do enjoy manipulating your emotions. Um, again, this advice only applies to relationships with narcissists or antisocial uh, people, people with antisocial personality disorder. Um, in normal relationships, jealousy should not be uh, a mind game. It should not be used against you and it should be dealt with in a healthy manner and communicated in a healthy manner. Um, and so I hope this video helps. I hope it helps validate you in some way. And again, if you'd like to learn more about self-care, emotional trauma, and narcissistic abuse, uh, please do subscribe to my channel, Self-Care Haven. Check me out on Facebook at facebook.com slash selfcarehaven. Follow me on Twitter at selfcarehaven. And check out my book on Amazon, The Smart Girl's Guide to Self-Care, available in Kindle and in print. I hope to talk to you soon. Until then, take care.